the Church of St. Martin's, in Herefordshire. Also known as the SAS Church, for its links to that courageous regiment of men. The story of the church was described in A Little History of St. Martin's Hereford, written by H. Martin Eville, of Dilwyn in 1939. It came to light when Edna Langford, a church warden for many years at Bullinghope Church, came across the little historical leaflet while sorting through some papers. According to Mr. Evil, who lived in the old vicarage from 1901 to 1918, the first and original St. Martin's Church stood at the corner of Y Street near the old bridge, being consecrated in the year 1325. But the good people of Hereford pulled it down when the city was besieged by Oliver Cromwell's parliamentary army in around 1645 because it gave shelter for the enemy who were trying to take over the town. It was 200 years before the area got its new St. Martin's Church, in the year 1845, and only because Queen Victoria agreed to give a sum of £1,000 to help build it. The government had refused a grant, said Mr. Evil. Here you see a Victorian stonemason's mark. I've spoken about these before. They show the mark of each mason in an age where a lot of people couldn't read and write so the mason would make his mark on there and the foreman would know who'd done the job how much to pay or who to reprimand if they'd ballsed it up the foundation stone was laid by the right honorable the lady emily foley because she had been one of queen victoria's bridesmaids in his little story, Mr. Evil said the bell in the tower was in the Great London Exhibition of 1862 in Hyde Park, and had been used at closing time to ring out the visitors. At the close of the exhibition, it was purchased for the church by the vicar, the Rev. G. H. Kirkwood. Mr. Evil said it was the late Bishop Percival who had told him that the new St. Martin's Church was too isolated from the people. How things have changed. The church is most famously known for its links to the SAS, 22nd Special Air Service Regiment. There are historic links with the SAS regiment, including a stained glass window and special graveyard section. Hereford Cemetery also contains graves of SAS soldiers, such as the legendary Lofty Large who had his service at St. Martin, and John McAleese the explosives expert who took part in the embassy siege. Who was said to feel no fear, feel no pain, but was brought to his knees by the death of his son Paul, blown up in Helmand province by a Taliban bomb. The SAS base is at Creedon Hill, Hereford. And you will see, both churchyard, and the base, from its exterior, of course. Now. Join me and Brandon, as we explore this beautiful church. Then, for part two. We head outside, to its churchyard, which contains the SAS graves. And here we are, ladies and gents. St. Martin's Church, Hereford. The SAS Church. We'll take you a walk around the outside of the building first. Because it's a pretty spectacular one, is this church. I'm afraid the uh, the sun's a little bit glary today, so bear with us, that's better. Just do that with you quickly. And you'll get a nice photo like that, the bell tower and whatnot. Right, we shall walk around the church first. My nephew's inside, he's fascinated by the, I am too, the SAS connection. There's an SAS link to this church, of course, a strong one as we've already discussed in the history and the uh, stained glass SAS window and memorial inside it's got some beautiful stained glass in it this church I think you can walk round this way because it takes you to the newer part of the cemetery and round the back of the church Making sure I don't trade in any dog muck, which I can see. 
This is its newer churchyard. The older graves around the front. I won't cover any of these, of course, because they are very recent. Uh, um, being a small village, or area roughly, I should say, obviously it needs its own cemetery and churchyard, so that over there, what we've just looked at, is an extension to the churchyard. It's the new cemetery over there, mate. Yeah. It says in there a lot of the service members are all buried in there. Oh, right. I'll cover the church first then and then I'll do that. Is that all right? Yeah. I'm just gonna have a oh, brilliant. That'll help us. If you find any interesting ones, you can point them out for me. Is that all right? Yeah. Perfect. My, ne My nephew's going to cover the churchyard. I don't know if you heard him say it says inside that he, uh, many of the SAS members are buried in the, the churchyard. Made me uh, start looking at some of these gravestones now. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. I'll do the church and then I'll come and look at that, yeah? I'm going to cover the church. He's not that much into his churches, Brandon, not like us. He's a good lad, though. Or a good young man, rather. You always think of them as being kids, don't you, no matter how old they get. He's 25 now. Works a good job, it's got a lovely missus. Life is good. It could be much worse, couldn't it, than things are. He's going to be uh, interested having a look at those stones. And that's what we'll cover after our churchyard tour. After our church tour, sorry. Lovely church, this one it really is nice. I'm just going to do that with you again. Just for a second, it allows me to take pictures while I'm filming, then you see, which helps. The ground is very soft here, it must have had a bit of rain recently. The graves aren't shockingly old, some of them. Mason's Mark, look. Each mark was unique to the Mason in an age where many couldn't read and write. They'd put their mark on the stone and the foreman would know what each man had done to pay or reprimand the appropriate person. And look, you've got your old boot scrapes there, look for scraping mud off your boots. And in we go. There is none other but the house of God, 1844. Oops. Luke pushed a pool door. I always do that. This is like a newer area which they use for uh, meetings and church centre and that but what we're interested in is inside the church yeah. this is a lovely one of course I love all the churches that we go to I don't normally do the high altar first but I'm saving the SAS element till last I normally save best till last And those brave men, well, they earn that title, don't they? Oh, this is nice what we can see in a minute. One of the things that we don't see in London churches very much, because some little oik would probably steal them, but I'll show you them in a minute. More stained glass here. To the glory of God and in loving memory of Harry Richard and Florence Margaret Hobbs, of this parish, rest in peace. So they would have funded the creation and building of that stained glass window. It's normally the way. Even the floor tiles are nice in this one. Lovely wooden pews. And what I want to show you, 
I won't touch them because it's disrespectful. Church wardens, wands or staffs of office. Most churches have two church wardens. Barkin St Margaret's my favourite church and the family ancestral one has the unusual distinction of having three church wardens. But yeah, these are the church wardens staffs of office. As you can see, in the old days of church wardens, they were honestly there, those staffs of office, to instill good behaviour in unruly parishioners, male and female, boy and girl. Yeah, our intros and any histories from now on, I will be using the automated voice. Because they read much better and quicker than I can, if I'm honest with you. stained glass. Yes, this church is older than Victorian, uh, as we've discussed in the description, because our descriptive history will be done before this, or filmed after this. This is a bit of an impromptu one, to be honest with you today. So, if this church is uh, older than Victorian, it certainly would have had some work done on it in the Victorian era. going to cover the high altar first. It's beautiful stained glass windows. There we are. Get you in a position so I can slowly zoom down and photograph. see the uh, these old bench type things wooden seats were for the priests and monks in the original old days the ones for monks were called misericords where they could rest between prayers and chanting and stuff See the candle snuffer and the lantern. I don't normally get this close up to a high water, but this I wanted to particularly show you the lectern, which is one of the finest pieces in the country. And that allows us up close to study this beautiful stained glass. the glory of God. Don't forget in the olden days when churches were built, it was a more religious age than we live in now. 
and they didn't just build for themselves or the prestige of their local area and civic pride and that, they did build to the glory of God. That's what these churches are about. Yes. We've got the altar table. Let's see. Now we shall leave the high altar because I don't normally get up that close to them, but I'm probably never going to get the chance to come to this church again, so. Take full advantage of the situation while I can. I don't drive, you see, and London and the outskirts of London is about my remit because travel is expensive. I don't like long journeys on trains. So yeah, pulpit. And the font is over there as well, which we shall see. well uh, that's a Victorian one by the looks of it but it's drainage thing could be older the earlier ones or medieval ones don't always tend to have a, a drainage thing in them although some of them were adapted later on take some pictures each of the motifs or carvings is different See, some people they prefer photos and some prefer the videos in yourself sometimes. To the glory of God and the memory of the men of St Martins who fell in the Great War. 1914 to 1919. Although the war ended in 1918, a lot of these men never came back, didn't come back home until 1919. Let me get a bit further back in a minute, then I can focus. Although we can see them pretty well from here. Photographed. Also, the memory of those who fell in the Second World War of 1939 to 45. Also, of Northern Ireland, 1988. Private J.B. and A.M. That Millican Bishop, L.S. Afghanistan, 2010. Lieutenant Captain or Corporal Daniel Cooper, the Rifles. And last, but most definitely not least, our RSAS men. In loving memory of Thomas Martyville Palmer, the Buffs, born May the 13th, 1880, died June the 6th, 1917. Thy dead men shall live. And you've got here... To the glory of God, the above window and the reordering of the transept was provided by public subscription in grateful thanks for the SAS Regiment's service to the nation. 
so that's really uh, something to be proud of, isn't it? Photograph you. And now we're going to have a look at the SAS window. Special air service. still blank spaces there. Mm. This is certainly an interesting one, isn't it, eh? Yes, I have some memorial appeal. Someone has tried to clean that, I'm afraid. In memory of Charles John Gwyn Bird, Lieutenant Colonel, late Indian Army, born 18th of June 1878, died 25th of October 1937, Freeman of the City of Hereford, eldest son of C.R. Bird, Esquire, J.P. and Mrs. Bird of Drybridge. got the memorial book, one of them. In remembrance, Hubert Leonard Gow, or Goh, born 1856, died 1914. John Edwards, born 1851, died 1917. Alice Rebecca Hager, born 1850, died 1918. The two sons and four daughters of John and Mary Ann Morris, formerly of Drybridge House in this parish. Rest in peace. I'm not going to be able to get that one too, we'll have a nice bit of this memorial book here. I think this door takes you to outside, but look, what an impress impressive old lock. We are the pilgrim's master. We shall go always a little further. It may be beyond that last blue mountain barred with snow across that angry or that glimmering sea. Twenty second, a uh, twenty, twenty two special air service regiment. Who dares wins? Donated by. 24, oh, I've got the number there, 24067752, Staff Sergeant Rusty Fermin, and dedicated to and on behalf of his fallen brethren. There we are. As I say, I wanted to end lastly with dedication to the SAS. It got a very military based theme, well mili military connection, shall we say, this church. We shall get to the end for our final views and then we'll be off outside and over to the cemetery. Lovely bit of stained glass. Beautiful with the light, with the uh, light shining through, and the church itself.
Right, hope you've all found this one interesting. Join me on the outside. Hello ladies and gents, and uh, we've fi I've finished in the church now. We're in the churchyard. Um, these are the SAS men's graves. Now they are more recent than I normally would film. So what I'm gonna say here is if anyone whose family is buried here, you see this video and you're not comfortable with it being online, please message me immediately and the video will be taken down right away. And that I promise you. I don't like to cover things that are too recent, but these men are so brave and so important in our country's history and in our own recent history, the 1970s, in many of our lifetimes these ones and the ones that behind us are more recent. And these men will one day become history as we think of it, like we think, we think of the First World War and the Second World War as history. Pause for each one. I don't want to focus too, too long on them, but I do want to cover them because it's such an important part of the national history, really. And I've seen this one online a couple of times. So, Commonwealth War Graves, you're generally okay covered for that. So I was saying to my nephew, it's the private family graves that you need to get permission for. I've only had a, ever had a permission filming for one modern grave once and that was from the, the young man's mum, Thomas Corley Cox. Commonwealth War Graves Commission always looks after their graves. They always look after their own. I'm sorry that some of the inscriptions are a little bit obscured by plants and stuff, but I'm not going to be going fiddling around with anything like that here because this is ultimate respect to territory and being on my best behaviour. See, my nephew is not comfortable with the filming in cemeteries. He's he worries that people won't like it, but I did say to him, mate, these videos <laughs> are quite popular. Be surprised the amount of people that find it informative. It's, it feels wrong to say enjoy it, but find them informative. And they are a part of the history. And when Brandon's old, his children, grandchildren if he has any, look, Falkland Islands, his children and grandchildren if he has any, these men, to them, they will then be history as we think of our grandparents at the First and Second World War, or grandparents and great-grandparents. Memorial Garden. And I won't cover, obviously, the uh, the ones that are not Commonwealth War Graves. There's a few more up here. Brave men. And the thing is with the secrecy that shrouds the SAS, Many of the missions that they dealt in, even now some of the Second World War stuff is still not public sector. So I think it's nice that they've got their own area that these men are all buried together 
than the brothers in that. And we've got this one over here, which is just a memorial stone and a bench. And then you've got all these that run along there, which I'm not really going to cover that much because they're not Commonwealth War Graves and where you stand on that one, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, um, I'll pause it just in case we find any older ones or anything like that. These ones here that are pointed all along the wall, they're the uh, the Falkland Islands, 5th of April 1982 to the 14th of June 1982. We the Pil Pilgrim's Master, we shall go always a little further. It may be beyond that last blue mountain barred with snow across angry or that glimmering sea so yeah we'll just have a slow and respectful walk by because as I say they are an important part of our country's history aren't they these men many of these I've uh, read about and seen things on online he's on the wall he's on the wall yeah Might be over this side then, because these are all Falk. These are all Falkland Islands. It could be on the opposite. There's plaques on the opposite side of this wall. It's a particular uh, particular young man. My nephew's trying to find. And these are really recent, these ones, so I'll not cover those. But yeah, this is the Falkland Islands and the Commonwealth War Graves. And the lovely old church, the SAS church. Hope you've all found this one interesting, ladies and gents. If I find any more interesting ones, I'll, I'll pause and then we'll see. And this is the one my nephew was looking for. Corporal S.J. Lane, Military Medal, uh, 30 for the 7th, 1963, to 26 of the 1st, 91, yeah. at the Bravo 20, and he was with Andy McNabb, and going to show us the other one now, so I'll walk you up to that because it's right at the end. See, he knows a lot about the uh, military history. Uh, interesting this isn't it it's sad but it's it's interesting I'm really really glad you uh, we came here like you brought us here today it's fascinating that other that's the other member look Vincent David Phillips Bravo 20 Special Air Service 26th of January 1991 aged 36 uh, so yeah, that's two, just two among the many, many important and interesting people, because they're all important, especially the SAS, and you get a military headstone like this, and... I haven't seen any of them, have you? What's that? I haven't seen many. Oh, my nephew was just saying he's not seen many of these military headstones before. Um, if you go in cemeteries and have a walk around them, mate, you'll see them dotted around sometimes. Okay. There's 16 in ours, you know East London yes, Cemetery. Yes, yes. No, no, I say yes. No, not that I've ever found, but there may be some somewhere. Uh, there's bound to be a database of SAS graves the, um, somewhere. Next location. Yep. Well, ladies and gents, I hope you all found this interesting. Um, like my nephew just pointed out, this one. Look, Julian Anthony Ball, member of the British Empire and Military Cross. Just some of the orders and awards that these men have got. And. I'll get you to the memorial stone at the end and that's what we shall end on. So massive thanks to my nephew for making this day possible because it's been an interesting one, hasn't it? I get a view of the church. I want to get a view of the back of that. Just like that. Picture. And then I shall end you off with this. 22nd Special Air Service Regiment, God rest their souls, indeed so, 
thank you for watching everyone. I hope you've all found this interesting and informative and rest in peace.